You guys, this Wi-Fi adapter is the easiest Wi-Fi adapter I've ever set up. It literally just took me like 10 seconds. Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you guys to the Daikin DKN Plus adapter. Now this little Wi-Fi adapter here that's actually built by AirZone for Daikin can do a lot of different things. And I'm very excited about this particular Wi-Fi adapter. You can use it on mini splits, Sky Air systems, and all of your VRV products. But what's even better is you can also use it for Modbus communication and you can communicate with Wi-Fi third-party thermostats. So for example, the Honeywell T10, if you really like that thermostat, or you really like the Prestige, or you really like the Ecobee thermostats, you can actually communicate over the Wi-Fi with this adapter and fully communicate with the indoor unit and not lose out on any features or communication logic at the indoor unit. This is huge because at least today, no other manufacturer can offer the same level of communication on their third-party thermostat adapters as Daikin can on this bad boy. We have a lot of information to talk about today, so you guys, let's jump right in. Now, if you just got a Daikin system, or maybe you've had a Daikin system for a while, and you guys just want Wi-Fi to be added so you have control from your phone or your tablet or other mobile device, Daikin, who partners with AirZone, which ironically is another company out of Spain, yeah, just like Intesis, but Daikin partners with AirZone on a lot of other products. And so AirZone has all of Daikin's communication logic and programming already available to them. So what they did is they came out with this card and this card will communicate with S21, mini splits, P1, P2, Sky Air, and VRV systems. And then it also has the functionality of communicating to a BMS via uh, Modbus. The other really neat thing is it also has all the terminals for a third party thermostat. So for today's video, this is gonna be part one. Basically, we're going to go through the installation setup and we're going to set this adapter up on the Wi-Fi and play around on the app. We're not going to hook it up to any third party thermostats in today's video. We're really just going to set this up for Wi-Fi control. There are three versions of this adapter. There is a version that you can buy that's just Wi-Fi for the S21 connection. There's also a version of this card you can buy that is just Wi-Fi for P1, P2 indoor units. And then the version that we're going to be using today is the everything version. This is the DCAN Plus adapter. So this has S21, P1, P2, and third-party thermostat control all in one adapter. So let's take a quick look at this unit here. I want to just show you around uh, close up what you get in the box. Uh, show you all the terminals. So first of all, this is where you're going to connect the Wi-Fi adapter to the indoor unit. There's going to be a cord in the box, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Uh, this is going to power the device and communicate to the indoor unit. This green connector uh, just off to the side, I actually put a little label on here. The label does not come uh, on this device. I added this uh, for you guys. This is your Modbus connections. Basically your green is negative and your blue is positive. I also added the negative and positive marks just to make it easier for you guys. On the other side, here's your 24 volts. This is 24 volts that you need in order to power the thermostat. Then you have your normal thermostat wires here. You have an auxiliary option, so maybe you want, I don't know, you want to connect an auxiliary heater or anything like that. And then this is your T1, T2 forced off connections that you would normally have on an indoor unit board. So you get pretty much everything that you need here. Now, for Wi-Fi control, all you're going to need is the cord that plugs in here 
and plugs into the Ender unit. So if I'm only going to use this device like I am today, all I need is the cord that plugs into here, and then it will plug into the indoor unit. And then I can set this up on the Wi-Fi, and I don't need any other wires. So that's what we're going to do today. When we come back in the next video, we will talk about the third-party thermostat integration with the rest of these wires. So in the box, let's quickly take a look at what we have in here. There's going to be a few wires that you guys are going to need. So the first one is going to be that cable that's going to plug in. This plugs into the bottom of that Wi-Fi adapter. And then on the other side, you're going to have a little connector here. This connector is then going to plug into one of these two cables. So you're going to get two cables here. So the cable in my right hand, it's got the black end, and then it's got another connector here. This connector is going to plug into the S21 mini split ender units. The connector here with the white end, you're going to see has two connectors on the other side. So this white connector here is going to be where you get power. These two wires are going to be your P1, P2 wires. Now, if you guys recall from past videos, P1, P2, they are non-polar. So either one of these two wires, gray or brown, can be plugged into P1, and either one of these wires can be plugged into P2. does not matter. It's non-polar. And then this connector here is going to plug into a particular connector on the indoor unit, which I'll talk about here shortly. And again, this is going to power the DKN Plus adapter. All right, you guys, so today I'm going to be installing this DKN Wi-Fi adapter on one of my VRV indoor units it's going to be the wall mount that's in my garage, the same unit that I pretty much use to guinea pig on all of these videos. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to locate the X35A connector. Now, depending on what indoor unit you have for VRV products, you're going to need to locate this. It's going to be potentially in a different spot on the board. The nice thing about the wall mount is the connector is going to be right at the bottom easy to access right next to your condensate float switch. So go ahead and plug in that two pin connector to the X35A connector. And then you're gonna take the two loose wires and you're gonna connect those to the P1, P2 terminal. Now, if you happen to have a mini split with an S21 connector on the board, simply take the other wiring connector adapter and plug that into the S21 connector now. Now you're going to take the other end and you're going to plug it into your longer cable that we just got done looking at. It snaps in pretty easily and then the other side is going to plug directly in to the Wi-Fi adapter. Once you guys have the Wi-Fi adapter installed, now we need to go to the app in order to set up the configuration. Now the app is going to be available on both iOS and Android devices. So we shouldn't have any problem downloading it from any of the app stores. It's called DKN Cloud NA for North America, but anybody who can download the app can use it. So DKN Cloud NA is the name of the app. You're going to want to get that downloaded. Before you guys are going to connect, you have to create an account. Just like with the Intesis Wi-Fi adapter, the best thing that you can possibly do is use a personal email account. So a Gmail, a Yahoo, um, you know, MSN, if you still use MSN is fine, or Hotmail, uh, Comcast, just don't use at Outlook.com or at your company.com because sometimes the firewalls will prevent the confirmation email from being sent to your inbox to confirm your email. You won't be able to log in until you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and use a Gmail to set this up, then go to your inbox, hit the confirm account button, and then your account will be set up. So once you log in, it's going to take you to the home screen, at which point you're going to see that there are no indoor units connected. And at the bottom, there's going to be a button that says configure unit. Once you do that, there's going to be a little message that tells you make sure your Bluetooth is on on your mobile device that you're using to set it up and then click on search for units. And you'll see right away the MAC address of your unit will pop up. Simply click on that and it will connect via Bluetooth to that device. Now, once you connect to that device, you're going to want to scroll down 
and at the very bottom of the screen where it says connect to network, you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on connect to network. Now, once you click on connect to network, a list of Wi-Fi networks will populate, pick your network, type in your password, and then you will go ahead and connect the device to the Wi-Fi network. So once your Wi-Fi network connection has been established, it's going to take you back to that screen. And at this point, you can go down to the bottom and click on associate. And what you're doing there is you're associating the name of that unit to your app. So here's where you can type in the unit name and you can set up the uh, unit of temperature where you're located. So your time zone and you can even change the icon name or the icon picture as well. And the other thing you can do is set up a group. So for like group, I basically just typed in home. And then for my unit name, man cave. So it's the man cave unit at my home group of units. So if you have multiple units, you can tie them to, to similar groups. All right, you guys. So now that we're all set up, we're going to play around on the app just a little bit, just to kind of give you guys a, a quick demonstration. So if you guys go ahead and look at the home screen, everybody should be at this screen once you've gone through and set up your first device or if you've gone through and set up two or three or multiple devices and now you're at your home screen, this is what it should look like. Now from the home screen, you can turn your device on or off simply by clicking on the on or off buttons. So you can see that there. Now if I had multiple devices, they would have all shown up under the group that I created. So earlier when I was going through and associating my device, I called it the man cave and I put it in the group called home. Well, let's say I was one of the lucky few people who also had a vacation home. I don't, but let's pretend I did. Then if I had a, a Wi-Fi adapter there, I could give that group vacation home. So I can control all the devices from my group from this second row. So if I want to turn everything, let's say I had three devices hooked up to my home group, then I could turn everything off from there and everything on from there. And if I had other groups, which I don't, but if I had other groups, they'd be unaffected. Or I could go to all of my units. So this air climate units, this is just everything on my account. I could turn everything on my account off or everything on my account on. And I personally probably wouldn't ever use that. I don't turn any of my stuff off. Now, if we click on our device, so we're going to click on man cave. This is what your Wi-Fi platform is going to look like. So we have off and on right now it's on and it shows us that our room temperature in my man cave, my garage is 73 degrees, which is great because I have it set for 74 degrees. Now, if I want to change the mode, I can change the mode from cooling to fan mode or I can put my unit in dry operation. And dry is just the same thing as cooling, but it ramps the fan to low. And the idea here is you get a little bit of dehumidification. Where's heat? Well, I can't put this unit in heat because this is not the master controller for my system. The air handler inside the house upstairs on my Daikin One Smart Thermostat is the master. So if I wanted to switch the entire system to heating, then this would automatically switch to heat and fan as the two modes available. Remember, it's a heat pump. So if you're not the master, you can't choose the opposite mode. So because the master is in cooling, all the rest of my devices go to cooling. So let's say I wanted to change the set point. So I have two options. I can hit the minus button or the plus button, or I can simply click and drag this little uh, ball around and change the set point to whatever I want. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, down at the bottom, I have a little fan speed icon. So this is your fan speed. So low or high, fan speed one or fan speed two. The wall mounts, or at least the wall mount at my house, only has a low and a high. Therefore, you only have two fan speeds here. If you have some of the other styles of indoor units, like an air handler, an air handler will have uh, one, two, three, and auto. So. What you see here might vary. Uh, schedule. So I have a Daikin Madoka, which does not have scheduling available, hooked up to my man cave, which if you guys know from past videos, I don't use schedules because the whole purpose of an inverter system is to set it, leave it, and forget it. Maintain temperature. It's the most comfortable. It's the most efficient. 
So I don't use a schedule, but if I wanted a schedule, here's where I could go in and set up a schedule. I don't want a schedule. So we're going to go back to home and click back on our unit. And you can see there really isn't much else to do here. So from a controls perspective, controlling each unit's very, very easy. So let's take a look at what other options we have in the menu. So we have schedules, which we were just looking at. We have manage units. So if we want to manage a unit, here's where I can come in and add more. So at the bottom, I have configure unit. So if I need to add another Wi-Fi adapter, I could come to manage units, click on configure unit, and then repeat the process that we've already done. But right now I wanna see what are my options to change information on my existing unit. So I can go in and change the name, I can change the group and I can change the icon. And I can also delete it from the Wi-Fi account if I want. So in the event you guys connected your Wi-Fi adapter and then after you did that, you didn't click that associate button at the bottom. You could come in here and you could change the name from here. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We have manage users. Okay, so obviously I'm the only user set up on my account, but I believe we can set up other users. Can I add? Ah, right here, you just hit the plus sign, email, and then you either make them an advanced, that would be yes, advanced, or nope, basic. Okay, cool. And I'm going to give them access to this unit. So you just type in the email here, whoever, John Doe at gmail.com. And now they have access. So this would be really cool if you have a bunch of these in the commercial world and you have like a building maintenance person who gets advanced controls, but then you're going to give basic control to each of the people in the office. I like that. That's a cool feature. Third party devices. So third party devices, this is where we're going to add a third party thermostat, which right now I don't have anything hooked up. But if we click it, you can see I have Honeywell and Ecobee. Eventually, you're going to have a bunch of different brands here as updates will automatically roll out you will eventually see more and more brands. But let's say I had a Honeywell. I could go in, I could log directly into my account here and it will just automatically sync your Honeywell thermostat over the Wi-Fi to the Daikin cloud. So now when you go into your Honeywell home app and you change the set point, it'll go from the Honeywell cloud to the Daikin cloud and down to the Daikin unit. So the room temperature will get reported to the, to the Honeywell app get over to the Daikin app, down to the Daikin unit. So you don't lose any PID logic here. So this is a very, very cool feature, which I'll be setting up in another video. So you guys, I hope this information has been helpful. I'm very excited about this Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, after seeing how incredibly easy it was to not just install, but also set up and how fast it went. And then once it was set up, how easy it was to use it just, it doesn't compare. I don't see any reason why we need the Antesis Wi-Fi adapters anymore. If you already have one, great. They work great. But if you don't already have Wi-Fi, unless you want to fork out the money for the Daikin 1, which is expensive, I say just do this on all of your indoor units and you'll be fine. Gives you the schedules if you need to do the schedules. I really like this app. I'm surprised because I was a little hesitant at first. I thought, eh, another Wi-Fi solution. Now we'll see how well it works over time. Again, we still have to hook up that third-party thermostat, which we'll do in another video. But overall, I definitely like this Wi-Fi adapter. So you guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. It really helps out my channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you guys have an awesome day.